This video is about solving equations of the form a times x equals b, where a is a matrix, b is a vector, and x is a vector that we're trying to solve for. We'll spend a bit of time focusing on equations of the form ax equals 0, where this is the 0 vector. Equations of this form, where we have all zeros on the right-hand side, these are called homogeneous equations. Let's start with this example. We're trying to solve the equation a times x equals b for x, where a is this 3 by 3 matrix and b is this length 3 column vector. To make the dimensions work out, I'm going to need my vector x to be a three-dimensional column vector also. That way, when I multiply a times x to get b, I'll be multiplying a 3 by 3 matrix by a 3 by 1 column vector to get a 3 by 1 column vector as I want to. But this vector x is completely unknown. It's what I'm trying to solve for. Since it has three components, I'm going to use three variables, x1, x2, x3, to refer to those components, and I'm trying to solve for those components, x1, x2, x3. Now if I work out the matrix multiplication, the left side of this equation becomes the matrix 1 times x1 plus 2 times x2 minus 2 times x3 in the first row, 3x1 plus 4x2 minus 5x3 in the second row, and 0x1 plus 1x2 plus 1x3 in the third row. So this left side is actually now just a column vector, right? There's just one entry in each row, and it has to equal this other column vector, 1, 7, negative 2. So that's just the same thing as this system of linear equations x1 plus 2x2 minus 2x3 equals 1, 3x1 plus 4x2 minus 5x3 equals 7, and 0x1 plus 1x2 plus 1x3 equals negative 2. Well, we've seen how to solve systems of linear equations like this before. One way is to write it out as a matrix. 1, 2, negative 2, 1, we're writing out as an augmented matrix where the constants go in the last column of the matrix. Second row of the matrix will be 3, 4, negative 5, 7, and the third row will be 0, 1, 1, negative 2. What we'll do is we'll convert this to a reduced row echelon form, and then we'll be able to read out the solution. Notice that the matrix we're converting is simply the matrix A augmented with the column B. I'll skip the details of converting this to reduced row echelon form, but the final answer looks like this. So we can read off a solution that x1 is 5, x2 is negative 2, and x3 is 0. In other words, there's a unique vector x that satisfies this vector equation, and that vector x has components 5, negative 2, 0. I'd like to briefly look at a related problem, where instead of solving the equation a times x equals b, we solve the homogeneous equation a times x equals 0. Here, the 0 vector needs to be a 3 by 1 column vector. By the same reasoning as before, this amounts to taking the augmented matrix, this time augmented with a column of zeros, and converting it to reduced row echelon form. You can check that when we do this conversion, we get this matrix. Therefore, our related vector equation with a 0 instead of a b has a unique solution where x1 is 0, x2 is 0, and x3 is 0. In other words, the solution is the 0 vector. In fact, I could have predicted in advance this, that the zero vector would be a solution to this equation with all zeros on the right side, because if I multiply any matrix by all zeros, I'm going to get zeros. What I didn't know in advance is that 
this zero vector is the only solution. That's what working out the reduced row echelon form told me. Let's look at another vector equation. Once again, we're thinking of the vector x as our variable, and once again, it has to be a three by one vector with three components that I'll call x1, x2, x3. It has to have these dimensions to make the dimensions of the matrix multiplication work out. This vector equation is the same thing as this system of linear equations, and solving the system is the same problem as converting the augmented matrix to reduced row echelon form, where the augmented matrix I can get just by putting A together with the column vector B. Once again, I'll omit the details of converting the matrix to reduced row echelon form and just write out the final answer. In this case, our system of linear equations has infinitely many solutions. I can tell that because I have this column that's not my augmented constant column that doesn't have a leading one in it. So this variable x3 is a free variable, and I can write my other variables x1 and x2 in terms of x3 because x1 minus x3 is minus 18, and x2 plus x3 is 13. That comes from these first two rows. And therefore, I have that x1 is x3 minus 18, and x2 is minus x3 plus 13. So my vector solutions are of the form x3 minus 18, minus x3 plus 13, x3, where x3 can be anything. I can also write this as a sum of two vectors. One vector that's multiplied by x3, so that'll be x3 times 1 minus 1, 1, plus a vector that just has constants in it, minus 18, 13, 0. Let me once again consider the related homogeneous equation, ax equals zero. Solving this vector equation can be accomplished by converting the associated augmented matrix, augmented with the zero column vector, converting this augmented matrix to reduced row echelon form. When I do that, I get this matrix. The same matrix I had before, just with zeros in the far right column. So the solutions to my a times x equals zero equation are given by x1 minus x3 equals zero, x2 plus x3 equals zero, and no conditions on x3. In other words, x1 equals x3, and x2 is negative x3. That's the same thing as saying that the vector x which originally is x1, x2, x3, is of the form x1 is equal to x3, x2 is negative x3, and x3, a free variable, is just itself. So x can be thought of as x3, which can be anything, times the vector 1, negative 1, 1. Notice the similarities between my families of solutions for my two related equations. The family of solutions for my equation a times x equals b is this particular solution, negative 18, 13, 0, plus this expression here, which represents the solutions to my associated homogeneous equation ax equals 0. Another way to say this is that my solutions to the equation ax equals equals b are of the form x equals x3 times v plus w, where w is the vector minus 18, 13, 0, a particular solution to the equation ax equals b, and v is the vector 1, negative 1, 1, so that x3, v is a general solution to the related equation, ax equals 0. 
solutions to ax equals b can be written as a particular solution plus the general solution to the related homogeneous equation ax equals zero. Let's recap where we've been. In our first example, our homogeneous equation just had one solution, the zero vector. Our equation ax equals b also had one solution, the vector 5, negative 2, 0. In our second example, our homogeneous equation had infinitely many solutions of the form x3 times 1, negative 1, 1. And our original equation, ax equals b, also had infinitely many solutions of the form negative 18, 13, 0, plus x3 times 1, negative 1, 1. These two situations are typical. In fact, if the equation ax equals b has any solutions, in other words, if it's a consistent system of equations, then ax equals b has one unique solution if and only if the associated homogeneous equation ax equals zero has one unique solution, namely the zero vector, and ax equals b has infinitely many solutions, if and only if ax equals zero has infinitely many solutions also. Although I don't have time to demonstrate it in this video, I do want to emphasize that this correspondence only holds if the equation ax equals b is consistent, it actually has any solutions. If this equation ax equals b is inconsistent, no solutions, then anything goes. Well, almost anything. The equation ax equals zero will always have a, at least one solution, the zero vector, but it could have one solution or infinitely many solutions, and this equation ax equals b still have no solutions. In this video, we solved equations of the form ax equals b by writing down the augmented matrix with a and augmented by b, and then converting it to reduced row echelon form. We also noted that the solutions of ax equals b are related to the solutions of the homogeneous equation ax equals zero, at least as long as the equation ax equals b has solutions. Specifically, if ax equals b has solutions, then ax equals b has one solution, if and only if ax equals zero has one solution. And ax equals b has infinitely many solutions, if and only if ax equals zero has infinitely many solutions.